Well, that document is any objection. There is objection. That brings to a close questions for oral answer. I call on government order of the day number one. Arts Council of New Zealand, Toy Aotearoa Bill, interrupted debate on second reading. When the second reading debate was interrupted, uh, Catherine Delahunty had the floor. She has five minutes still to speak, should she wish to use it. Catherine Delahunty. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Art is important to life, and the art of political rhetoric has been quite big in this house lately. Unfortunately, we lack minimalists, and we have a lot of surrealists. But let me get away from those surrealists, because the Greens are naturalists, and we would like an extremely natural way of dealing with a very important restructuring issue. Restructuring um, of the Arts Council in the second reading is a very interesting bill. It's like all restructuring, we have to ask the question whether it will make things better. And we have looked at the bill and unfortunately we are not yet convinced. The bill presents some major challenges to us uh, and we voted for it in the first reading to the State Committee because we were hoping to get clarity on the views of the arts communities from around the Motu. Now there were 15 submissions and three, one, three were presented and unfortunately these did not really clarify our position. We had to then talk to a number of artists from the Māori and Pacifica communities and they expressed con serious concerns about the need for this particular change. Although we do believe there are some good changes in the bill, unfortunately we cannot fully support it. Former Green MP Nando Tanchos, who is on the Arts Board, gave us considerable assistance and is quite, he's in favour of these changes because he believes it comes to grips with some of the issues. But the possibilities um, around arts development and business, which are excellent in the bill and which Nando drew our attention to, are not our central concern. We do think it's a good thing that artists, through this bill, will receive more opportunity to understand the business side of arts development. Because as we all know, the artist struggles with business. It's not a natural um, synergy. And so this bill does a good job on that. But our major question is, Mr Speaker, like all restructuring, is this really justifiable in terms of equity? And unfortunately, the feedback remains extremely mixed. And there is strong proof that Māori artists and Pacifica artists do think that subsuming Te Wakatoi and the South Pacific Arts Committee will not necessarily be a positive step for them. So th there is a question of what is a, of the principles at play and the principle around mainstreaming to get to the table and get more share of the pie is one principle in terms of those cultures versus the other options of strengthening and improving the functionality of Te Wakatoi and the Pacifica Arts Committee. Now, senior Māori artists have expressed concern to us that this process was a fait accompli, and although they agreed Te Wakatoi needed to be changed, they didn't support mainstreaming. In fact, their um, desire was for a Māori Arts Council. That's what they felt manifested the treaty most effectively. And in the absence of strong evidence otherwise, we continue to support that te treaty perspective from those Māori artists. The history of mainstreaming, even in a strong and dynamic and established Māori arts lobby, has not been great. A minority voice does remain a minority voice at the table. But equally, we recognise the effect of being sidelined. And this is a question that we must consider in terms of um, the, the benefits to Māori and Pacifica artists. Now, Pacifica artists were even more concerned than Māori artists about the loss of the Pacifica Committee because it's quite difficult for many Pacifica communities to get engaged around funding for Pacifica art. And while the committee existed, even though there will be two members on the, on the, on the restructured board should this bill go through, the Pacifica artists that we spoke to already find it an unfamiliar and alienating process. And to lose an identifiable committee where they feel that they can identify with the pe people on it, to be replaced by those two positions on the main committee is not seen by them to be a step forward. And so, again, that issue of mainstreaming versus an independent voice is a difficult issue, and we don't believe that the bill is a disaster, but we are concerned that it may be a Eurocentric approach to restructuring. And it may be Eurocentric in, in terms of who actually gets heard, who actually gets their, um, their funding. There are some other really important issues in the bill. Um, community arts providers. Now, that's, that, this issue around community arts is very important in terms of maintaining rural involvement and community engagement, and I agree with some points that Tracy Martin made about this, because we do need community arts funding. And although I do believe that there are some good aspects of the bill in terms of practical um, restructuring, 
there are some fundamental flaws around the loss of a strategic plan. So if we don't have strategic direction, if it's completely controlled through a central body and you don't get that feedback from the flex roots and the grassroots, if you don't have those two committees representing groups that have been marginalised in the past, it's difficult to give the bill our wholehearted support. Now, the Green Party would very much like to be able to do that. But at this stage, we do think that possibly this restructuring, which may go through, will then be changed in a few years and we'll have those committees set up again. Because humans often do this. We often think we've got what we need to do is restructure the structure and everything will be OK. But the Green Party stands with the Māori artists and the Pacifica artists who said to us that they wanted this not to happen. And to, to this point, we still are unable to support the bill. Thank you, Mr Speaker. I call the Honourable Member Simon O'Connor. Uh, thank you.